Welcome to the channel and this short video on update 11 for Medieval Kingdoms Wars. If we click news here guys, you'll see update 11 is live. We are back and it was released on the 28th of July 2017. After taking a week off, we are back to work and continue with our weekly update schedule. This week we have another massive update for you. One of the top requested features has always been adding more playable kingdoms. In today's update we did just that, unlocking every nation from the papacy to small duchies like Bohemia. In addition, we focused on publishing all the recent new content, fixing a number of issues across the board, improving balance and taking care of a few bugs reported in there. Now I'm not going to list all the bug fixes and all that. What there will be in the video description is a is a basically a list of the changes that are made. Obviously the big change is the new factions. We will be looking at those in a minute. But what I want to do talk out first is if you look at the release notes that came out on Steam, there's a couple of comments that really grabbed my attention. And I'll read them out. It says the next major milestone, rework unit management to plan and enable recruiting units in towns and to allow towns and armies to hold and transfer armies. Now, to me, that's going to be a big step forward in the campaign to start building your own armies. Because one of my kind of bugbears at the moment is that we've got these tier two, tier three armies, but we don't know what actually makes them up. And they, some of them seem to be quite basic. I think the ability to build our, and manage our own armies will really add a, an exciting dimension to the campaign. And then it says, goes on to say, next update we will concentrate on basic diplomacy and the research tree. And that's something I am really looking forward to, guys, is now to start to build that campaign up and develop it. And what I'm going to do now is we're going to have a look at the new factions. We're going to click on campaign. I've got three kingdoms which we'll be looking at in a little bit of detail because I want to illustrate a few points, especially poor old Portugal. And what you can see here now, we've got 14 new factions. And if we start, with, and so you've got Ireland, Austria, Aragon, Grenada. I'm really looking forward to the Emir of Grenada and I'm hoping that the devs take an opportunity to give us a little bit of unit variety with them and you've got the papacy portugal venetian republic kingdom of bohemia kingdom of england scotland castile burgundy france holy roman empire and i think we're back to ireland again are we yeah and the duchy of Aust uh, uh, austria kingdom of aragon yeah we're back again now now these different factions have different starting positions i have tried all 14 and had a look at their starting positions things like the papacy start with a tier 4 city at the moment that's either Do Dover or Le Orleans off the hand I can't remember which one it goes there and what I'm going to do is flip back guys because I've chosen four minor settlements the Kingdom of Aragon actually starts with two settlements a tier 1 and a tier 2 settlement Ireland has a starts with a tier 2 and a tier 3 settlement and poor old Portugal starts with a tier 1 settlement and what we're going to do is we're going to go into Aragon because what I want to kind of show you is the starting position and maybe well I've got it's not a complaint guys it's just my it could be my opinion but I'll, I'll wait till we get in to talk about it here we are and what we've actually got is Pamplona and what you can do is flip through here but we're, we're going to go to Pamplona first and you can see it you can upgrade the city straight away and if I click that, I'm not going to upgrade it. And it says 570 gold. Now, if you enter the city, now bear in mind this is a tier one. This is the basic, basic settlement that you get. And here we are, guys. We're just going to do the cinematic. It should come up. There we are. It will stop. And you can see straight away that this village is probably the best way to describe it has Lord, no defenses what whatsoever and of course you'd have to get your troops out starting now a little bit of a tip here guys see these windmills if you put send your serfs up here get them cutting wood i'll just illustrate the point i think get you cutting wood as well and you've got no buildings here and of course the first thing i would build is a barn get some food going so we can recruit more more serfs I mean there's not much point at the moment recruiting extra serfs because if you close the map and come back they will be gone so at the moment it's just better to operate and the second one that you really need to build is uh, an iron camp 
that will make sense when I go to the uh, next settlement. I just want to show you guys this point. Now, my point is, if you know, remember when I clicked it, it said upgrade. To me, I would like to have an extra conditions associated with those upgrades that you've actually built the basic buildings and in the case of when you get to higher tier buildings you you actually build the defenses so there i can see these guys of now delivering to there so where if you come down here they would have walked all the way up to here and you can see we've got the iron camp built now and got the barn nearly finished there we are and again what I've been doing in my campaign when I've been building these cities, I've just trained like one pig, one cow. Because if you close the map and come back in again, it disappears. Anyway, so what we're going to do now is we're going to go back to the world map. And that, remember that, it's a tier one city. And if I go to, I think this is Toledo here. This is the tier two city. Again, I can do the upgrade and it's only going to cost me 570. The upgrades seem to relate to the actual number of times you actually do it rather than the level of the city. And if we do an enter city on this one, bear in mind this is a tier 2 city. And we come here and you can see straight away I'm not going to build anything because I'm going to be going straight out again after I've illustrated this point, guys. So we've now got this area here right and this will build towers if I click on it but what what I want to do now is if I flip straight out and again we we'll come here to Toledo and this time I am going to upgrade the city to 570 gold then we're going to re-enter again quick tip guys also is when you're starting out the campaign do not spend your gold on buildings build them on the on the map Gold is far more important for upgrading cities and recruiting armies than building buildings. So here we are, we're back again guys. And you can see now you've got the two upgrades up and running. And what I'm going to do is, well, we've got plenty of food so I think what I'm going to do is build an iron camp. I mean, and my kind of what I would like is that I would t like to tie the upgrades to the fact that you built the previous building here. Not so that you can just upgrade and with not building anything. I, I think there should be some precondition that you've done some work on your settlement before you actually started. I mean, I mean that's very much a personal view, guys. Um, just get these guys out here. Get them working. Get the idle ones down here as well. Get them collecting. And what I'm going to do now is the trouble now is I've got to choose the right one. Oh, well, I think is that the fort upgrade or is that the Bailey upgrade. I think this is the one I want. If I click here. Oh, I've clicked the wrong one. Oh no, I haven't. Sorry, apologies, guys. What you get is these towers. Now this is the upgrade from when you go to a level 2. Remember I've upgraded this to a level 3. So so level 1 after you've upgraded you have the option to build these towers now. They're, they're interesting but I've got a feeling they're just cosmetic. I've, I've built troops and I've tried to put archers in the top of them and nothing seems to happen so I think this is a more of a cosmetic upgrade and then I think and then what I'm going to do now is I've got I should have the wood for this yeah and then now I'm going to show you a little bit of a trick here guys see it started to build that's the palisade that's going to go around now if you actually exit again I don't know if this is intentional or whether it's just a feature but it's a little bit of a dodge if you're impatient like I can be sometimes and of course I'm making this video so and then if we go back in if we re-enter the city and there you are guys 
Hey presto, the whole palisade has been built. Almost like magic. I, I, I think it probably works on the fact that once you've initiated the palisade, that when you come out and when you, when you come back in again, the game automatically updates the, the town to the way it should look on there and of course what we've also got now is the our poor old peasants are gonna have to walk a long way round to actually do it so what we'd probably do is send them up there to chop some wood swing those axes fellas but i just wanted to show you that guys i mean as i say i mean at the end of the day it isn't a major issue but it just seems to be a a little bit of um exploit with the game and um, what we got here? We got the manor. I think my I can't remember where my. I'm sure I built an iron mine here somewhere. Yeah, an iron camp. And of course, what I would really do first, normally if I was building, I'll, I'll do that in the next one, guys. Anyway, that is what I wanted to show you between tier tier one and tier two. And as I say, if we now flip back out. I personally I think I'd like something in the town to say what city it is and what tier it is. A bit more information about the city stats but I suppose that may come with time. And as I say we now got here, yeah, this is now tier 3 and now there seems to be a, a glass ceiling now that once you get to a tier 3 you can't seem to go up unless there's going to be any additional conditions and these now, and what you've actually got is like Zaragoza here. Now, the I, one thing I have noticed with Zaragoza is that is could this be up to upgraded to a tier four? I haven't been able to conquer that. I did have a go and I couldn't do it. But that kind of indicates that footprint that this is a tier three, which is the same as the ant. But that map doesn't. So it makes me wonder whether these could be upgraded to a tier four, and whether a tier four could be upgraded to a tier five. I've, I've done a little bit of flipping round. I mean, see, Toulouse again is a tier 3. But but you can see Leon here is a tier 4. So I don't know whether minor settlements can only be taken up to... I mean, if any of you guys know, could be taken up to a tier 3. And then these major settlements can be taken from a 3 to a 4 to a 5. But I haven't been able to conquer one of those to actually confirm that. Now what I'm going to do now is we're going to go back to the main menu. And we're going to have a quick look at the Irish campaign. Yeah, I, d I don't want this video to go on too long, guys. But I thought I want to show you guys one or two points. Right, before I get into the settlements, we won't be here very long. I just want to show you this, guys. Your Carrick standing if you, ready. if you watched one of my previous videos, I asked what the anchors are for. And Where's I've actually found out. Again? What the anchors actually mean is points on the coastline where you're armies can take to the water i think they've ditched that mechanic they had before where you had to load armies onto a, a, a carrack so if you watch now guys it's there but they will go ashore there and then march around here not a problem guys i think it's quite amusing actually watching them do it but so i actually found out what the anchor these anchors actually mean so if you wanted to get from say there to there you'd have to come all the way to cork to come through here and as far as i can tell i've done a bit of experimenting is you can pass through these ports even if you don't own the cities anyway guys now here we've got a, um tam is a tier three and we've got limerick is a tier two what i'm actually going to do is show you guys what a tier three city looks like or town looks like when you start So here we are guys and basically a tier 3 city when you start you really you have to build up for the basics so, I mean to me it's not a big issue I mean I would I think now if I was building this up properly I would yes I know they need jobs I would build that and I would build an iron camp I think I've mentioned this already because you need iron for the palisades and of course, we get our guys out chopping wood. For sure, I mean, this may seem a little bit annoying for a tier three city, but I mean, considering Ireland's in a very, very quiet place, I mean, you could turn it to your advantage 
because you can't upgrade this city any higher. Also, I don't see that before. So what you could do is spend some time building up your other buildings. Well, you don't have that many building slots and building up lots and lots of resources because at the moment you, you only accumulate resources as and when you're on the map. When you go out, as far as I can tell, you do not accumulate resources. Oh, come on, guys. Do something. I've told you to chop trees. Swing those axes, fellas. Get in there. Yeah, so because obviously when you build the palisade, you've only got the one entrance, and then that restricts the movement of your serfs. So maybe there isn't a constraint. And it also then brings me back to what I was saying about that you should have conditions on the upgrade. You should have built the basic towers and the basic palisade or something like that in order to be able to upgrade. Anyway, I think that's all I want to show you guys here. I mean, I, I don't really want to draw this out too much. I've probably drawn it out far too much and as it is. And just to confirm, see here you can't, and you can see the buildings that I built here now showing up. So you've only got, what's that, one, two, three, four, five slots to build. Of course, you might, in the future, you will have to make decisions against military and economic, because you've only got five. And I think Ireland is probably a, a quite peaceful start here, because as far as I know, no one's actually doing here. Again, just to show you, Dublin's a tier four, and so is Cork. So it's quite a, and I think conquering these settlements could be quite interesting. And we've got Amar, tier three. I mean, it's a quite a tricky start actually, guys, because I think there's seeing you're starting off as a small settlement. There's no really easy captures around here as playing with Ireland. Anyway, what I'm going to do now is I. One more thing to show you guys, and then that would be the end of the video. Right, so here we are, guys. We're back on the campaign map. I'm just going to show you Portugal. Portugal's a little bit unfortunate in their start. And I think there's a bit of a uh, an error with their start that may need to be fixed. There we are. Portugal starts with a Porto. And it actually says that this is a tier one city. Now watch when I enter the city, guys. And here we are, guys. And if you actually look here, this actually says that it's a tier, has the building for a tier two. So I've got a feeling that maybe a Porto should be a a tier two city rather than a tier one city. And there's probably been a mistake in the configuration because if you click that. It says initializing, initializing wall construction, but it doesn't seem to do anything because I think it's a tier one. Because what it should be doing is building towers. My lord, some of thy workers need to be given jobs. So it, it's kind of hung up a little bit there, and it says it's built that built them, but. Unless it's building something way off the map, I can't see it, guys. So there's a little bit of a problem with um, Portugal at the moment. So if you want to choose a faction, I probably wouldn't bother with Portugal. Plus, it's a pretty tough start, actually, as well. I, I, I did have a look at it. And if you actually look round, guys, you've got Lisbon down here. Tier 4. Uh, You've got your tiny little tier one settlement. Even the neighbours are tier two. And of course, oops, that was a little bit of a long pause there, guys. And of course, you've got Leon here, which is a tier four. So you're not exactly in friendly territory for a tiny little settlement like this. Uh, there's a tier one there in Salamanca with Spain. I don't know whether that would be an act of war attacking those. So maybe you could expand this way, but it's going to be a bit of a challenge, guys, here. I mean, my, my logical conclusion would be here. So again, one of the problems you've got is that you've only got a very, very small tax income. And of course, you'd have to upgrade the city, which would then take your money away. 
and then of course trying to recruit a bigger army because I think the army that you've got is only a that's a tier 3 army but that doesn't mean very much at all oh where are you going oh no he's gone for a walk around the hill because just to give you an idea guys I mean, if you, if you come down here, I mean, and this man, this is a tier three, and that's a tier three, tier two city, and you can't seem to be able to attack this settlement here, and my person is bugged out. Great. Okay, time to get out of here, guys. I. That's better. I think the Portugal start's got a bit of a problem. Anyway, guys, I'm sure that will be fixed. I've got every confidence in the developers. And if I remember, I'll actually go and log it as a bug. And I think this is where I'm going to stop, guys, before I go bore you completely to tears. I think I've covered all the main points. Some of them are not related to the update, but I thought I just wanted to draw your attention just to show you, you know, show you the features that's go. Again, I think this game's got vast potential and I'm going to still continue tracking it. But this is where I'm going to leave it for now. I hope you've enjoyed the video and until next time, whatever you do, enjoy your gaming.